In October of last year, I put out an exhaustively researched leak on basically everything I could confirm about the RDNA 2 lineup that would be rolling out over the next year. And in hindsight, it seems like it was pretty much bang on for the majority of it. Heck, even the white text, which denotes confidence, but not absolute confidence, seems to have been almost entirely correct. And so far, that seems to include my Navi 23 info as well, which was at the time, of course, mostly white text as there was simply much less known about it at the time compared to Navi 22 and Navi 21. A part of the text that was not white, though, was the positioning of an 8 gigabyte card. I was aware, of course, of what was clearly a 256-bit card, Navi 21, and a 12 gigabyte card, Navi 22. And then below that, there was a 10 and then an 8 gigabyte card. Now, the 10 would logically be a cut-down version of Navi 22 with a 160-bit bus for 10 gigabytes. And so if something's below that in positioning and segmentation, you would then assume, well, then there's a 128-bit card. And that 128-bit card was stated to be launching late quarter two or maybe quarter three. And, well, here's the thing, though. <laughs> Considering the current shortages, I would say that I would be very surprised if AMD launched all Navi 23 and all Navi 24 products in quarter two like they were kind of planning to before. Heck, AMD hasn't even launched their professional RDNA 2 cards yet, and I'm really not kidding here. I am still told those cards, at least the Navi 21 version, was planned to be announced in December and launched in January. Um, right now, the behind-the-scenes chatter on Navi 23 is still somewhat at a minimum, even though more leaks are coming out right now. But... I guess what I'll say is this. I do think it's time for me to confirm what I know about Navi 23 up until now. And so, well, let's go into it. And before I go into it, I'll just say that a recent chip hell uh, Navi 23 GPU Z leak pretty much scoops me on almost everything I'm going to tell you. But I don't know. I think there's some new information here that I'm not seeing other people report. And so, well, let's just go into it. Here is what I can confirm about Navi 23. All right, Navi 23. First, let's get into the specs. So it will have 32 compute units at 2.4 gigahertz or higher clock speeds while gaming. Considering how hard they pushed the 6700 XT to compete with higher tiers than originally intended, it would not surprise me at all if this thing was boosting at 2.6 gigahertz or whatever. But I just know originally this was going to be a more efficient card. I just don't know what they're going to do on desktop necessarily. Um, of course, 8 gigabytes of GDR6 over a 128-bit bus. I've known this for half a year. And um, it should have 64 megabytes of infinity cache based on some math that I've done. But I can also see a scenario where it has 32 megabytes. And I will elaborate on this later. It should, on desktop, though, have a 150 to 200 watt TDP. But I do believe better bend yields are going to be used to compete with the RTX 3060 at a 50 to 100 watt TDP. But these will, of course, be the better bend yields on desktop i expect them to push this very hard and it should as i reported before have about 5700 xt performance at least in 1080p and depending on if it has 64 megabytes of infinity cache yeah, i think it could be even above 1080p whether it's ultra wide or 1440p around a 5700 or 5700 xt even and it should also come with a 299 to 349 price point. But again, remember, AMD can make this whatever they want at the last minute. And I think that my older, lower price expectation came from seeing this as a 5500 XT replacement. But at this point, it's pretty clear that this thing will be called the 6600 XT. And the 6600 XT typically sold for about 300 bucks, and prices have gone up. So... This will hinge heavily on if supply starts meeting demand better. I mean, I do see things coming in stock more and more often on AMD.com, at least in the U.S. So things are improving, even if most people, most people have not noticed. But personally, I kind of suspect $319 is what AMD will target. And that's because it is a hair below the 12 gigabyte 3060 MSRP, even though I know, guys, right now MSRP doesn't matter. I've seen it in the comments more than enough times. I'm aware, everybody. But 
it is probably going to be a bit stronger. So I think 320 bucks will be the perfect targeted price to say, hey, it's stronger. It's a tad cheaper if things ever meet up with demand. And uh, that's the most likely price point. But again, technically, they could position it as a 5,700 price for 5,700 XT performance. I just hope they don't. And yeah, look, this was originally planned to launch at the end of quarter two in 2021. But right now, although there are leaks coming out of chip hell and video cards and such, I'm not hearing this preparation like the thing's going to be launched within a month, guys. This, this is not like the 3080 Ti. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if this wasn't launched until quarter three. And in fact, behind the scenes, I'm hearing just nothing but there's tons of shortages going on that AMD really is focusing on supplying gamers right now. That's why the professional cards haven't launched yet, in addition to wanting to make sure the professional drivers are ready. But that I really think people should keep their expectations in check for how many new dies are launched in the next two quarters by AMD. I expect the full lineup out by the end of the year, but right now there's it's a very hard decision to launch anything new and you can't keep up with demand for your existing products. Although, at the very least, I will say that I do expect the top tw Navi 23 card or something to launch just so they can support laptops and so that they are ready to start producing more if demand, or should I say supply, starts catching up with demand and demand goes down a bit over the summer. Again, like I said in my last NVIDIA video, you want to have the full lineup ready to be going at full speed before supply catches up with demand. You don't want supply to catch up with demand then not have your full lineup ready. And uh, at the very least, then the last thing I can say is just do not expect this thing to have high availability if it were to launch in July or something. So yeah, that's what I know about Navi 23 right now. Unsurprisingly, like the rest of the RDNA 2 lineup, the segment it's replacing, which in this case is the 5600 XT, it'll have more VRAM and be a tier stronger in performance at least, but it will also cost more due to what's going on with demand, which on the subject of price, it actually kind of brings me around back to talking about the Infinity Cache, which I promised you I would talk about more later in the video. That part is now. So... Back in late 2020, a big thing everyone couldn't believe is that AMD was going to compete with a 384-bit 3090 with a 256-bit Navi 21 and became very obvious by, I'd say, late September last year that that was due to a new cache system. Some people doubted this, said that couldn't be, but that's what ended up happening. But the amount of cache in each die really wasn't confirmed by a lot of people until... I don't know, a month before launch, people were still guessing at Navi 22's cache until, I don't know, I mean, I think I confirmed it, yeah, months after Navi 21 launched, and now it's a similar situation where months before Navi 23 launches, it's like, well, how much cash does it have exactly? You know, I actually thought Navi 23, I knew at the very least based on what a couple sources told me, it'd have significantly less cash or maybe none. And none made sense to me if you think of the 6700 XT as possibly costing less than a 5700 XT, which a lot of people thought it might. Of course, that's not what ended up happening, and it was pushed to perform a bit stronger than most people expected. So with that mindset, a $480 6700 XT, and then what I would logically assume will be a $380 or $400 6700 non-XT, which I know there's leaks about 6 gigabyte versions, including ones I've been told about, but I still just really think AMD is going to launch that with 12 gigabytes so that they can charge more money for it, and it doesn't look weird next to the 12 gigabyte 3060. I mean, then if it goes, you know, like 480 and then maybe, I don't know, 380 for the 6700, I would then assume that there's no way this is a 5500 XT replacement, that this thing will be above $300, and that AMD will, therefore, want it to not completely fall apart in resolutions above 1080p. Which, speaking with developers, I was always told for, honestly, I think over a year, that the Xbox One's ES RAM was really not enough that generally speaking, they needed about 100 megabytes of on-die 
you know, ultra fast cache, L3 cache, to accelerate one uh, 4K bandwidth, and that around 40 to 60 megabytes was needed for 1080p. I don't want to get bogged down into why it's not an exact per resolution increase, but th that's what I was told. And then, yeah, I was told that for a rich, and that's how they put it, rich 1080p buffer, you needed about 40 megabytes or more, and the Xbox One only had 32 megabytes. So to me, 64 megabytes sounds perfect, actually. And again, like I said, the math I kept doing based on Patrick Schur's die size information, to me, suggests that 64 megabytes will fit into that die. I mean, you, you look at the 35, the 335 millimeter squared Navi 22 die, you remove 32 megabytes of the Infinity cache, some compute units, and make the bus smaller. I think that fits in like a 236 millimeter squared package. And 64 megabytes, in fact, would probably be enough to work okay at like 1440p medium settings, which if you're going to charge over 300, I think it's about time you have good 1440p performance in the lower mid range. So, I think it's most likely 64 megabytes. I think that kind of sounds perfect. And, well, I will just say that I'm aware that other people are speculating that it could be 32 megabytes. And I don't know for a fact that it's 64 megabytes. That's just what I believe it to be. So it's worth pointing out that it could be 32 megabytes. And although I brought up the 32 megabytes in the Xbox One, it is also worth pointing out, though, to be fair, that... It really seems like Infinity Cache works better than the ES RAM and the Xbox One. That despite being told you needed around 100 megabytes for 4K, the 6700 XT's performance doesn't completely fall apart in 4K. It definitely doesn't scale as well as Ampere, or Ampere is less efficient at 1440p depending on how you look at it. But it, it, it would not surprise me if 32 megabytes wasn't quite enough before, but it is just barely enough now. Although I will say if it is 32 megabytes, yeah, I, I, I just think the 6600 XT will only be good in 1080p. Um, and above that, it will fall behind a 5700 XT. Could be wrong. I'll admit if I am, if that's what ends up happening. But I look at the benchmarks from WCCF Tech, and, and then I also, you know, think about what they're going to price this at. I, I think 64 megabytes is the most logical conclusion. But again, others are speculating 32. They're also speculating 16 megabytes for Navi 24, which that's the final thing I will say at the end of this video is Navi 24 kind of looks like a fun little chip there. Uh, and I think it makes a lot of sense to have, whether it's 16 megabytes of Infinity Cache, I'll be fascinated to see how that performs if it is, or if it ends up being 32 megabytes. I do think that a small 16 compute unit card with a tiny amount of Infinity Cache, a 64-bit bus with a single 4 gigabyte GDR6 chip sounds like a pretty good low-power RX 560 replacement that could use under 75 watts. And in fact, in some packaging and binning, I think could be an excellent future MX550 competitor in laptop, which AMD has been lacking for a very long time now. And look, despite having a small amount of Infinity Cache, yeah, I think 16 compute units clocked above 2 gigahertz. Uh, I think it could be a killer 720p 144hz esports card. And I think they can manage to charge $150 for that. So, yeah, that sounds like the segmentation that I think we should all remember from the beginning, which is that I was hearing AMD targeted each die for a specific resolution. Navi 21 was for conquering 4K. They didn't care about 8K. Navi 22 was for conquering 1440p. And Navi 23 was for conquering 1080p. It's logical to then assume that their most budget card would be a low-power device that's just for budget gaming in cheaper or super-thin laptops like the MX series. And that's what I think Navi 24 is. And, well... That's about going to do it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I, you know, thought it was time, although I'm working on, of course, a few other things right now. I just become obsessed with looking at Navi 23 specs and what it likely is and just decided to dig on that this week instead. But, you know, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell button to see the other upcoming leaks, opinion pieces, and podcasts. And, you know, speaking of podcasts, if you have the extra money... Supporting us on Patreon gets you early ad-free access to Broken Silicon exclusive podcast dishing, the ability to ask guests questions for Broken Silicon episodes, which it's worth mentioning. The next one is planned to be an Azure 
engineer who has experience working with people on deploying the Xbox APU in servers and game development as well. Patrons got to ask this guy questions before the episode went live. So remember to support us if you can, if you want those features. And as always, I should stop rambling. Thank you for watching.